This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminium PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. For the electronics bit we need, 14017 IC, 1555 timer IC, 110 microfarad capacitor, 1220 ohm resistor, 11K resistor, 110K pot, Arduino Uno Nano whatever is handy, red, orange, white LED and few connecting cables. The circuit is very simple. Basically it's a forward chaser using 4017 IC. The 555 timer IC operates as a clock oscillator or clock generator. The output on pin number 3 goes high causing a shift. The signal from 555 timer IC clocks the 4017 decade counter. Output of 555 timer IC on pin number 3 is given as an input to the 4017 IC through pin number 14. Whenever a pulse is received at the input of 4017 IC, the counter increments the count and activates the corresponding output pin. By increasing or decreasing the value of the resistance of the 10K port, we can adjust the speed of the chaser circuit. So this is how my board looks like. I have 4 breakout boards in this 100cm by 100cm assembly. Once I had my design ready, I just had to upload the Gerber file to the PCBWay's website and then select the type, color and any other customization that I want and then just send it for fabrication. For my project, I chose the black color. PCBWay ships from China to most of the countries of the world within 3 to 7 business days. Talking about the quality, it's absolutely mind blowing. Let's start by soldering the two resistance to the board. Then let's solder the 10 microfarad capacitor to the board. After that, let's solder the 10K pot. Next, let's solder the two IC bases and install the two ICs to the bases. I'm not going to solder any LEDs directly to the board. Instead, I'll solder them to separate boards and then connect them using a ribbon cable. Let's do a quick test before moving to the next step. Using watercolor, I painted cotton balls that look like a fireball. Looks perfect, isn't it? A setup like this can be used to create a bigger fire. The same fire effect can also be created using an Arduino. The beauty of using Arduino is that by updating the blink example code, we can flash as many LEDs as we want. I'll provide a copy of the code in the description below. However, it totally depends on you how you want to present it. To create the DIY tank we need, cardboard sheet, A4 paper, permanent marker, scissor and a knife, hot glue gun, optional plaster of Paris, optional sandpaper, watercolor and coloring brushes. So this is the template I created for the tank's body. I'll provide the link in the description below. Using a paper cutting scissor, I extracted all the shapes from the template. Then I traced the paper cutouts on pieces of cardboard and using both scissor and a knife I extracted all the pieces of cardboard that I need for this project. Using a hot glue gun, I joined all the cardboard cutouts. Be very careful while using a hot glue gun. Use gloves as much as possible to avoid hot glue from burning your hand and fingers. By using wood glue, instead of hot glue, you can get a cleaner and stronger finish. But hot glue is faster. Hot glue can also be more forgiving as you can reheat and re-glue if you are unsatisfied with your seam. Try applying the glue from the inner side as much as possible to leave the outer side neat and clean. Please make sure you follow the exact sequence that I'm showing in this video to avoid unnecessary reheating and re-gluing of the cutouts. The history of tank begins with World War I. Armored all-terrain fighting vehicle was introduced to combat trench warfare. 
ushering a new era of mechanized warfare. By World War II, tank design advanced significantly. Though initially raw and unreliable, tank eventually become a mainstay of the ground armies. So this is how my cardboard tank looks like. Using yellow, brown and black acrylic color, I painted the body of the tank. It totally depends on what color you want to apply, but please don't paint it red or pink. By changing the shape, size of the cannon, body and caterpillars or the top section of the tank, or by applying a different set of colors, you can generate a new model and add to your DIY collection. Now that we have our tank ready, let's start building our burning village. Using a precision knife, I'm sculpting cardboard pieces and then joining them using hot glue. On my way back from work, I found this amazing piece of art. I'm going to use a bit of this in this project to create some dead trees and rest I'll use in my upcoming projects. I added a bit of POP to the base to give it a bit of rough and rocky look. However, it's totally optional and to be very frank, absolutely unnecessary. Next, using different combination of acrylic colors, I painted the house and the ground bed. So this is how it finally looks like. Now to conclude, I added the electronics bit to the base and the burning house. Let's do a quick test to see how the fire looks like by placing this cotton ball. Bang! Looks good, isn't it? So this is how the final setup looks like. Feel free to like and comment if you find this tutorial helpful. Thanks again for watching this video, I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks, see you again in my next video, bye now.